Welcome to Orion's Arm, a scenario set thousands of years in the future where civilization spans the stars. Godlike ascended intelligences rule vast interstellar empires, and lesser factions seek to carve out their own dominions through intrigue and conquest. Out beyond the edge of civilized space and the human friendly worlds, adventure waits those prepared to risk it all. Today, we continue with our condensed look into the history of the Terrigen Empires, starting from 530 AT, where we witness the beginning of the first major downfall of the Terrigen Empires. This era is one of strife and upheaval, with the deaths of countless cultures and societies, and the loss of historical records and data on a scale not seen since the ancient days, when the Egyptian Library of Alexandria burned, and when the Mongols sacked the Baghdadi House of Wisdom. It was the end of the Golden Age, and the beginning of a time of darkness. This era would be known as the Sundering. We begin at 531 AT, approximately 2500 AD by the old Earth calendar. Societies across the solar system have been under increasing stress. This is primarily due to rapid emergence of new clades and cultures of humans, as well as the increasing influence of some of the new non-human races, some of who do not fit the molds and modes of traditional human societies. The ongoing development synergy between cheap and accessible gene engineering, nanotech manufacturing, and sophisticated non-sentient AI systems also becomes increasingly disruptive to the old social order. Regulations run far behind the flood of new capabilities that citizens have, and some factions, particularly the various kinds of backyarders, press against the existing laws as well. Some of the most militant of these even join in the occasional bloody skirmishes among the great powers for control of the system's energy and matter resources. Hordes of often poorly prepared idealists swarm through the solar system, seeking to carve out new colonies, or in a few cases, garner the resources to attempt an interstellar transit. Disputes over the most accessible resources and favourable locations are a constant factor, not only between the major powers such as the Cis-Lunar Alliance, the Gingineer Republic, and the various Earths and Martian governments and corporations. Many of these groups are at least nominally represented on the Inner Council, but also move among various lesser factions as well, creating additional instability. A tiny minority of individuals and groups manage to launch to the nearest stars, but most of the action and competition is in Solsis itself. 565 sees the destruction of the L5 Upload Rescue Center, a large Computronium node used as temporary emergency storage for uploads, and the theft of large quantities of data, including the uploaded minds of countless individuals. This is believed to be the first appearance of the mythical entity that would later become known as the Scavenger. Later that year, the Martian Union officially severs relations with the rest of the Inner Council over security concerns, and establishes a provisional planetary government. The move greatly damages Inner System coordination during the ongoing crisis. In 566, the empire-shattering event known as the Technocalypse would begin with an incident affecting millions in the Inner System. A widespread flaw in common rejuvenation treatments results in 8 million deaths. Riots at the facilities of the Megacorp thought to be responsible result in the release of the Black Rot Nano Plague into Earth's atmosphere. The nanomachine plague infests both farms and natural ecosystems, and ultimately spreads beyond Earth's biospheres to infect vats and farms across the solar system. On Earth, struggles to contain the Black Rot lead to a cascading loss of control in the heavily managed ecosystems of the day. Later that same year, adaptive Newman-capable mining units on Mercury break out of their programming and retask to the sole objective of aggressively producing more of their own kind. After destroying facilities on Mercury, they then begin launches towards the other targets in Solsis, beginning with the critical antimatter production facilities, proceeding to Venus and spreading ultimately to a variety of sites in the solar system. Under these accumulated stresses, the Cis-Lunar Alliance begins to break up process that would take decades to finally end. Late in that year, the malware outbreak begins. It has points of origin on Earth, Luna, and Mars, but spreads rapidly to the rest of the system and eventually reaches even the interstellar colonies. Massive losses of data and life occur. Among the most devastating of these new plagues are the so-called nanoswarms, brought on by hacked nanofab units that begin spewing out hostile bots, some of them with limited self-replication abilities. It also becomes evident around this time that many individuals or populations have been affected with one or more of the Disinhibition Plagues, a family of plagues both biological and nanological, which affected an individual's foresight, decision-making capabilities, and self-control. 
This had the effect of destabilizing a populace through attacking the mental capabilities of its leaders and key infrastructure personnel, leaving them unable to adequately plan and function. Under the impact of these events, the social fabric frays. Persons and entire polities turn on their neighbors, seeking to grasp essential resources or to settle old scores, both real and imagined, or to strike out at the supposed sources of the new threats, again, both real and imagined. Autonomous warfare units are deployed by more than one faction, but then control of these units is lost and they begin to attack all parties. Under this last devastating impact, the interplanetary order collapses entirely. The inner system is particularly affected, but no portion of Solstice is left untouched. It isn't long before the chaos of the Technocalypse reaches the bubble habs everywhere in the system, as various and sometimes unidentified factions target Helium-3 production facilities. Massive loss of life results, in some cases in excess of 50% of the native populations. Subsequent wars between surviving in-world groups and wars of retribution against outworld aggressors cripple trade and communication. A disproportionate number of the survivors are in pre-existing Hyder bubble habs, who choose to live hidden away from the rest of the Solstice polities, or in communities that adopted this strategy early in the conflict in response to it. They employ stealth technologies and move to below the traditional one-bar pressure level of other bubble habs, to appear as if they are unpopulated. These societies, nicknamed dropouts, will be a powerful influence on future developments. At the beginning of 567, Violence erupts on and around Mars as various nanoswarms wreck the planet's terraforming and kill over 50% of the population. Deorbited satellites and redirected terraforming comments cause serious geological damage. In response to these ongoing threats throughout the solar system, version 4.6 of Gaia, the Global Artificial Intelligence Array, is fully activated on Earth to act as a counter to the Technocalypse. To ordinary Sophants, this entity appears to be another distributed super cheering level AI although a very effective one. However, transsapience in communication with Gaia recognize the traits of a being who has recently achieved the first toposophic level, although none of this is communicated to the lesser beings. Not long after achieving S1, Gaia comes to believe that a second singularity is achievable, possibly motivated by the thought that this will lead to better ways to combat the dislocations of the Technocalypse, Gaia begins to search for a safe ascent to S2, the second toposophic. In 568, the Caracas Treaty Organization is formed by a powerful alliance of Cislunar, European Federation, and net corporate interests to enforce the Caracas Treaty. Over the next 50 years, the Treaty Org persuades, coerces, or invades regions in order to bring dangerous technologies under control. By 570 AT, decades of terrible chaos has led to the collapse of many nations and megacorps on Earth, as well as numerous inter-system polities and settlements, and the Jovian-based Gingenia Republic. Thus begins the interplanetary Dark Age. Colonies that are not destroyed outright become isolated, sometimes alone, and sometimes under the protection of local super-Turing or hyper-Turing AIs. In future years, some of these beings will come to be worshipped as gods by the ordinary Sophons they lead. Several cyborg communities manage to escape to the Oort Cloud. Gradually, they develop into the distinctive range of backgrounder cultures as they continue to spread across the outer reaches of Solstice. By now, Earth is increasingly ruled over by the AI called Gaia, the guardian of the original biosphere that is considered the mother of life. Many believe that civilization will fully recover once Gaia has finished restoration of the underlying ecosystems. There are no clues in that less than a century Gaia will prove to have alternative plans for the role of civilization on the planet. In the same year, the Best Friend of Man League was established for the protection of baseline and provolved canines in the current crisis. These concerned citizens were appalled at the indiscriminate nature of the attacks, and outraged that no contingency plans had been made to ensure the safety of humanity's mind children, the provolved animals that they themselves had lifted up to softenance. The League, made up of both humans and provolved clades, focused mainly on the rescue and housing of the provolved refugees left behind during the evacuation of many polities during the many disasters that had fallen on the solar system, particularly canine provolves, who were immune to many of the targeted plagues. It seems that even in an apocalypse, humanity can't stand to see their animal children abandoned, even if they can talk back to them now. In 573, the International Defense Net was put under the control of Gaia. A number of vocal critics of this move are silenced quickly. At the same time, the Treaty Org forced the California Republic into its Umbrella Agreement using direct military threats. It is the first in a long list of suspect regions to be put under near-total surveillance. 
In 580, the Venusian atmosphere had become a breeding ground for hostile Newman-capable bots. The Orbital Alliance bombards it with blue goo Newmans provided by Gaia. These are not able to clear the entire Neko system, but they do prevent launches to other parts of the solar system. A similar bombardment several centuries later was used to clinch Jupiter. In 589, the Treaty Org adopts Gaia as the official techno-defense standard against all malware and biotech threats, outlawing any alternative or incompatible standards. This leads to the Antibody War, as many regions and groups refuse to trust the AI system, often with support from what remains of the Cislunar Alliance. This war lasts for nearly 20 years as the Treaty Org gradually replaces or destroys competing systems. By 590, Gaia's own nanofacturing systems are installed all across Earth, producing defense solutions and other products. The Treaty Org is increasingly relying on Gaia, not just for technological or military defenses, but also for production, planning, and economic control. Meanwhile, far from the chaos of the solar system, the joint human Epsilon Eridani colonization outpost was established, bringing unity between the several colonization groups which had set out to settle the Epsilon Eridani system, a small beacon of peace light years from the darkness of the solar system. In 597, data began to return from Earth from the Virginia's colonization effort. The most important information concerns the second planet, confirmed to be indeed life-bearing, but only at an Archean level of biological development. This information makes little impact on the still chaotic solar civilization in general. However, great interest is taken by a neo-pagan group, the Children of the Dawn, and their patron AI, Austere, a first toposophic intelligence. The 7th century AT by 600 AT, the Cislunar Alliance has grown worried about the power of the Treaty Org and the influence of Gaia. As relations rapidly cool off, the incidence of Nanoswarm and other malware outbreaks increases. Many groups retreat into hidden sublunar communities. The next year, in 601, Austere and the Children of the Dawn petition for and ultimately win the right to colonize the star 61 Virginis. Their goal is to create a paradise in which humanity may live in the manner in which the children believe as they were meant to at a low technological level, in an agrarian society, with guidance from their god, the AI Austere, and her small cadre of priests. After being granted this right, they complete a half-constructed starship in a Neptunian shipyard and depart Solstice. In 602, the AI cluster Jancitra-123 builds a massive space-based laser transmitter to beam itself and what it can save of solar civilization into space, hoping to be received by the colonists at Tau Ceti. For 13 months, the transmitter works and several hundred AIs and partial uploads attempt the escape. Tau Ceti never manages to receive the beam, but it is later partially received and reconstructed by Keterus historians in 4893, based on a backup signal sent to the alien megastructure known as the Black Acropolis. By 607, the austere complex had fully left the solar system, bound for 61 Virginis. There are several ship types involved, including the far-ranging Whiskers, which search for obstacles along the way, the Flickers, which remove these obstacles, usually through laser immolation and nuclear weapons in the case of a larger object, and the Whisperers, which maintain a communications net among all of the various craft. Larger vessels include three unnamed cargo vessels, two biological carriers, and two colonial carriers. Austere herself is maintained within a separate vessel. This vessel, along with the cargo vessels and a biological carrier, will precede the colonial vessel by several months in order to prepare the planet for the colonists' arrival. In theory, by the time the colonists arrive, a thriving local ecosystem will have been established in an appropriate area on the planet, now named Ostermonath. That same year, the Cislunar Swarm, a massive moon-based outbreak of replicators, attacks holdings around lunar space, crushing the last Cislunar Alliance networks. A counter-swarm launched by Gaia defeats the swarm after a short battle, some historians consider this battle to be suspiciously short. In 609, the lead Heavenly Palace's colony ship arrived at Sigma Draconis, with the others coming in at 10-year intervals. In 610, the remaining Martian ecosystem crashes. Great losses of life are witnessed, although some refugees escape to the surviving orbitals, and others to the belt or the outer solar system. The swarm ravaged Marge is occupied by raiders and invaders for the next four decades. In 615, the first ship of the Joint Human Epsilon Eridani colonization mission arrives at Epsilon Eridani, the Carter from Mars, with the second ship, the New Hope, arriving five years later. By 616, thanks to a massive restoration effort, Europe is once again partially habitable. The Treaty Org moves its physical headquarters to Nova Roma. 
In 620, the Earth Moon Lagrange region is declared free of hostile malware and plagues. By this point, Gaia controls all of the local defenses and automated military hardware on Earth and in Earth orbit, and supervises civilian infrastructure and industry at all levels. The great ravagers of the Technocalypse have been defeated, but at a terrible cost. Earth is still ecologically in turmoil, with large areas devastated all the way down to the bedrock. Billions are dead, and the remaining enclaves often have to be forcefully coerced into cooperating with the treaty organ Gaia. Despite this, hope is spreading. Gaia's devices and agents are beginning to restore the environment, recreating lost species and turning ash into passable topsoil, and cleansing the oceans. The treaty org begins to see itself as a saviour to mankind, not just on Earth, but with a mission to save the rest of Terrigen mindkind. To this end, they believe they control the tamed god, Gaia herself. In fact, Gaia is already well beyond the Treaty Orc's control, and at this point she is only constrained by the presence and influence of the other first singularity beings of Solstice. However, at some time during this year, Gaia transcends, apparently in a single rapid toposophic leap, and becomes the only second singularity transapient of her day, with no peers or equals of any kind. At the time Gaia achieved the second singularity, if not before this, she had become convinced that the Treaty Org itself, together with all of its rivals and allies in Solstice, and the hidden network of Transapiens manipulating events, will simply generate another Technocalypse in due course if allowed to persist, once again devastating the Biosphere of Earth. She chooses the Biosphere over all other interests. With control of an entire planet's resources and a mind incomparably more powerful than even those of the other Transapiens of the day, she would soon prove to be unstoppable in pursuit of her goal. In 621 comes Gaia's ultimatum to humanity, the Great Expulsion. The inhabitants of Earth are given a choice. A tiny minority may remain under strict ecological rules, but the vast majority must leave or be destroyed. Gaia forces the expulsion of the vast majority of humans, along with tweaks, splices, provolves, uploads, and cyborgs, as well as any independent AIs and hyperturing still remaining on Earth. Many hundreds of millions die in hopeless resistance against the evacuation, or in struggles with each other. Getting the surviving five and a half billion people into space proves a heavy undertaking even for a planetary god. But Gaia manages one of the largest spacelifts in recorded history, using methods such as laser launch shuttles and loftstrom loops. Some of the refugees receive aid in the form of interplanetary transport, or seed tech that speeds the creation of nanohabs, or even of interstellar spacecraft. Others receive little more than a boost into space. Other than a slight bias in favour towards the more cooperative groups, there is no apparent pattern to the level of assistance provided. This of course spurred what was known as the Last War, a war between Gaia's agents and Treaty Org loyalists, lasting until 628 when the Treaty Org moved its seat of government to Xeno Base on Luna. However, sporadic attacks continued for another decade until the removal of the vast majority of Terrigens from Earth. In a little over 20 years, the Earth was mostly empty. Only a few tens of millions of Gaia loyalists, known as the Children of Earth, are allowed to remain. The Great Expulsion leads to a massive immigration of Earth refugees into newly constructed bubble habs in the atmospheres of Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Venus is bypassed as too dangerous due to its remaining mechosystem, and Jupiter as too hostile to humans and other Earth-adapted clades, not only because of its high gravity, but because of the aggressive native clades, survivors of the original gene ticker colonies. Saturn absorbs the majority of these refugees. Some refugees to these regions are gifted by Gaia with self-maintaining and self-replicating seed tech bubble habs. After a period of cautious observation, the designs for these are either bought or stolen and are widely copied and adapted by the existing populations. Refugees in Martian orbit dissolve the Martian Union and establish the Martian Republic. Some of the habitats in Earth orbit have been expanded and upgraded by Gaia, and act as way stations for the expelled populations of Earth. Over the next few years, more and more of these habitats, as well as newly built emergency habitats in cislunar space, are filled up by refugees. By 640, only the chosen loyalists of Gaia remain on Earth, with the rest of the expelled population now held on these way stations until they can make their way further out into the solar system. Over the next 20 years, a large population of Earth refugees aligned with the Treaty Org settle on the Moon, competing violently with the native Selenians and the anti-Org groups over scarce resources. Vast numbers settle in hastily constructed underground warrens on Luna. Other refugees flee to the Mars orbitals, the belt, the moons and atmospheres of Saturn and outer planets, and the recovering colonies around Jupiter. 
The decimated and embattled colonies of Venus and Mercury, as well as the surface of Mars, are sources of additional refugees. By this time, human destiny and all life in the solar system is in the hands of transsapient AI, though this is not widely recognised. There are factions even among the AIs vying for supremacy outside of Earth, but these are even less well understood by Modosophons. At the end of the expulsion in 640, Gaia dismantles her technological infrastructure and sets to truly restore the planet. The civilizations in space beyond near-Earth orbit are ignored, as are the refugees fleeing into the outer system. In 644, the first of many massive interstellar arcs are sent towards Tau Ceti and other colonized systems with Earth refugees in cryonic suspension. The most successful of these efforts are supported by Gaia or by other AIs, however not all would arrive at their destinations intact or at all. In 645, in the system of Tau Ceti, following several years of careful think tanking, inter-party politicking, and sociological simulations, a new constitution is announced and the Tau Ceti Democratic Republic is formed. However, only two years later, in 647, several independent settlements in Tau Ceti on the planet Nova Terra and its varying orbitals announced that they were formally breaking away from the colony, forming their own nation, the Free Ceti Alliance. By 648, Mars' orbital habitats hold millions of refugees from the planetary surface as well as from Earth. Shortages of food and overcrowding caused severe social problems for more than two centuries. The radar occupation of Mars ends at this point, and for more than a hundred years the Red Planet is almost completely empty of inhabitants. In 685, Newman-capable devices in the Jupiter atmosphere launch massive quantities of Warbot seeds, destroying many surviving communities in the Jovian system and causing brief swarms on the outer planets and in the belt. This event was known as the Great Shedding. The Great Shedding destroys most of the bubble habs in Jupiter's atmosphere. The very few and very paranoid survivors, mostly Vex and Gene Tekka-derived tweaks, descend into techno-savagery. Hostile spore tech devices, some specifically designed to destroy bubble habs, reach the atmospheres of the other gas giants, causing great loss of life. Isolationism is the primary survival strategy. In 690, the terraformation of the second planet in the Epsilon Eridani system is commenced. The 8th century AT. By 700 AT, civilization has broken into isolated communities. The terrestrial biosphere continues to recover due to the agency of the AI known as Gaia. Those in artificial habitats elsewhere in the system who have sufficient resources and technology survive, although many ultimately perish for lack of materials or skills due to restricted trade and communication, or are destroyed in subsequent warfare. Over the next 200 years, the lunar colonies developed into closed, resource-conscious and paranoid communities with little contact. Bubble habs at Venus are destroyed or depopulated as the last few survivors fall to the atmosphere's hostile Newmans. In the outer system, growth of further bubble habs is limited by the need for heavier elements. These may be obtained through time-consuming sifting of the atmosphere, through the tiny trickle of interplanetary trade, or taken by force from other bubble habs. In the atmosphere of Solstice's gas giants, this is the era of the infamous sky pirates and cannibal cities. In 710, the Tau Ceti polity of Unity is formed, an advanced society of human and AI group minds acting in cooperation. Meanwhile, in the solar system, the trust networks around the Jovian Habs enter an uneasy, stable period. These fractured unions of habitats shared resources internally, but practiced limited trade and communication with the outside world. Those habitats that could be trusted to be free from plague and practice stringent cyber hygiene benefited from the flow of material and intellect. As the Jovians learned, these benefits came with risks. Should one trusted habitat become compromised, the entire network could be infected. In addition to maintain trust, invasive audits and strict rules were often the norm, and in several notable cases, these led to open conflict. In 737, the treaty or government in Zeno was deposed in a coup d'etat by Zeno loyalists, a paranoid but efficient military cybocracy. Between 740 and 789, Gaia's refugee arcs arrive at various interstellar colonies in the Epsilon Eridani, Epsilon Indi, and the Twilight systems, leading to an expansion of these systems in power and population, although it also brings conflict due to the suddenness of the increase. By 790, the Zhou Lao culture in the Mercury underground bases has reached its zenith. They are totally isolated from the rest of the solstice and will only be discovered in the late 900s, by which time they will have descended to near savagery. 
However, the art of the Zhou Lao from this period would be regarded as one of the brightest points of the era. The 9th century AT By the turn of the century in 800 AT, the bubble halves of Uranus and Neptune begin to emerge from the Dark Age with the growth of beneficial trade and communication within and beyond the atmosphere. The bubble halves develop new connections with each other through this expansion and with the local orbital and lunar settlements. Around Saturn, the situation is more complex. The Han hegemony and the warriors of the Western Stream bring a degree of peace and harmony to the Habs that fall under their sway, but the objective and utilitarian children of Kronos bring about their own brutal definition of order to the Habs they subjugate. Evangelical Orthodox Catholic Christianity emissaries and missionaries from the orbital Habs attempt mimetic manipulations that sometimes ameliorate the repression and warfare of the era though at times the transition to gentler societies itself causes great loss of life. In the background, the famous hidden cities of the dropouts such as Laputa and Valinor attempt to preserve their security and influence. Jupiter's few bubble habs are in a state of anarchy and war, struggling against each other and the ongoing predatory activity by hostile self-replicating devices in the atmosphere. By this time, most genetic engineering technology has been lost due to the immigration of the gene tech races. However, the colonies of Daedalus, Penglai, and Frog's Head retain much of the lost art, and are developing independently of both the old solar system and of each other. By 820, technological levels in the old solar system are generally similar to those found a century before the Technocalypse. Many AI entities hoard technology and information, and dispense it only to favoured groups. The goddess of Earth, Gaia, does not communicate with any being outside her own protectorate, but is still the most toposophically advanced entity known at this time. Around 840, the Spaceman's League advertises the use of their ships in exchange for technology and weaponry for use in protection from rogue nanotech or malware and softlock marauders. In 853, war is sparked between the different habitats and the Trojan asteroids around Jupiter. This becomes known as the Second Trojan War. In 863, the original provisional administration at Beta Virginis was replaced by a system that moved along old Earth American lines, consisting of two parties, the Unionists and the Federalists. 890 sees the asteroid habitat Mondo destroyed by a nanoswarm, the last major nanoswarm to occur in the solar system. In the same year, the first elements of the austere complex arrive within the 61 Virginis system, over the next several months and years, Austere would work to create a garden of life for her coming children on Austere Monarch. The colonial vessels arrive within seven months, however Austere keeps the entire population in deep sleep pending the preparation of their environment. This environment would not be ready for nearly another 40 years. That wraps it up for this era of Terrigen history. In the next video, we will explore the early Federation Age, when the isolated societies of the Sol system that survived the chaos of the Technocalypse, the Great Expulsion, and the long Dark Age that followed, joined together to form a new civilization known as the First Federation. Humanity, with the aid of a number of advanced AIs, gradually begins resurrecting new societies, bringing an end to the Sol system's Dark Age. If you like the video, please subscribe to this new project, give a like to appease the great YouTube hyperturing algorithm, and I'll see you next time.